So if you've been following my channel recently, you'll know that I've been making it more of a priority to learn and get familiar with record box and playing on USB sticks. Now, as a Serato DJ, it can be pretty intimidating to make the jump and especially the preferences can be pretty intimidating and daunting compared to the preferences you see in Serato. And having those set right can really change your workflow and the way you use Rekordbox with USB sticks. So I figured I'd go through my settings and give you guys some ideas of what might be the best for you as a DJ because they work out the best for me. So we'll open up the preferences and here you'll notice that there's a bunch of tabs, six tabs at the top or icons and then each section has their own tabs on, below it. But first we wanna jump to DJ system. And in this, this is where you'll start if you're playing on USB sticks, this is kind of, you know, the things you want to get correct. So first we have the general at the top. You want to pick your waveform color. Three band is going to be um, the purplish blue, yellow, and white on the CDJ 3000s. Not my preference. The OG is the blue. That's that all blue waveform that you've seen on CDJs for over a decade. RGB is my choice and that's what you're familiar with if you use Serato. It's that, you know, rainbow colored uh, audio waveform where, you know, the lower end is red and the higher end is blue. So we're, we're going to go and set it to that. Waveform position, we're going to go center. That's just going to make the actual playhead going to be in the center and that just makes the most sense because it's like how it is in Serato. Type of overview waveform, we're going to go with full waveform because that's gonna give you the full length one instead of just the half uh, that you would see in older style CDJs. Key display, classic would be, you know, your normal key notation. Alphanumeric would be that Camelot key notation. That's what I prefer. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to uh, mix in key because you're just using some numbers and some letters and it makes, it, there's a whole system. Look that up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Next, we have category. Now, when you have your CDJ open with um, the songs in your playlist, you can actually have different categories set. What I like to do is keep it to a minimum. That makes it just a lot easier to change things up on the fly, um, especially with CDJ 2000s where, you know, the actual navigation is a little bit limited. You want to limit these to just what you need. So here I have artist, album, key, matching, and date added. Notice here on the left side, we have a whole column of things we can add and subtract. And another thing on the right side, you'll see there's some that are grayed out. Those have to stay there. Um, you can't remove those, just heads up. Sort, this is how you can sort your music. So usually it'll start either by BPM or alphabetical, depends on your preference. Um, but you can set other things to sort by. Me personally, I'm only sorting by alphabetic and that's going to be the track name, not the artist name. And then BPM, of course, um, that's how I usually have it set unless I'm looking for a specific song. I'll switch it to alphabetical. Then here on the third tab, we have one option for your column. So on CDJ 2000s, um, you have the song title and if you don't have this column set, you won't see that second column. So for me, I have it set to BPM um, just so I can see where I am BPM wise and when I'm mixing on, especially because I'm mixing open format most of the time, I need to you know, know very quickly where I am tempo wise. Then here into my settings, we have a whole bunch of different settings. So right here, I opened up player, which would be the settings on the CDJ and DJ settings is where you see all of the different options you have. So let's start from the top. So play mode, you have single and off or continue and on. I like it set to single. If you set it to continue, if you're at the very beginning of the track and you back spin, you actually go to the previous track, the end of the previous track in your playlist. So if you're like me and you like cutting, um, you know, kind of dropping on the one, you'll want to set it to single just so you're not going back into the track and hearing something that you didn't intend on uh, the crowd hearing. Next, we have eject load lock. I have mine on lock. What this means is if I have a song playing and if I try to load a song, it'll actually stop me from loading the song. And just the way that I work on CDJs, um, for me, it's happened where I've loaded 
a song on accident and now I'm stuck because Rekordbox doesn't have a you know control Z where you can go back to the previous track. So I like having that eject load lock on and what I do is I don't actually stop the track. I'll just put my hand on the platter, then load the next song super fast. I don't have to worry about actually stopping the deck and starting it over. Needle lock, that is on uh, the CDJs, you'll have a, a needle search function. I have it on lock just because if I accidentally bump it, I never use it. So I have it locked so I never accidentally use it when I don't intend to. Quantize beat value, this is for when you're using quantize on the CDJ. I have it set to one beat. I don't use quantize that often, but when I do need it on, one beat works for me. Hot cue auto load, this is important. I like having it set to on. That makes sure that all of my hot cues load whenever I load a track, super important. Hot cue color, I have off. Um, auto cue level, have it set to memory cue. Not really a function that I use, especially in uh, a lot of setups that won't even be set up uh, unless the AV tech really knows what they're setting up. Next time mode, I have it on elapsed. Um, and you can switch it back and forth on the CDJ, but I just have it set to elapse because I really don't need to know the remaining time that often. Auto cue I have set on. Uh, jog mode I have set to vinyl. If you set it to CDJ, if you, you move the top, or the, the top of the platter, you won't actually be able to cut. It'll just kind of be there for uh, pitch bending. For open format DJs, you'll want to have it set to vinyl because if you still want to pitch bend, you have the side of the platter as an option. So you actually have more control that way. Tempo range, I have it set to plus or minus 16. This is just my preference. I know a lot of DJs that like using plus 10 because it's more precise or even plus six to get even more precise. But the way I DJ, I'm jumping tempos uh, very quickly and I like having that extra range. Then master tempo, I have set to on and this would be what would be key lock in Serato. So for 99% of DJs, I would say, have master tempo set on. If you need it off for some reason, maybe you're doing you know, a looping trick a la James Hype or something like that, you might want to turn it off, but you can always switch it off on the CDJ on the fly. But default, I like having it on. Uh, quantize, I have it default set off just because I don't use it most of the time, but those special occasions. And I've had it happen where the previous DJ before me had it on and I didn't load my settings. So when I'm trying to mash a cue point, it comes in a little off. Not the best, so I always have it set to off uh, as default. Sync, have it set to off by default because I don't use it all the time. Phase meter, I have this set to type two. So type one would be the blocks that you've seen on the older CDJs. Type two would be like the two things that look like rulers and you've just kind of lined them up. Um, and that to me is a little bit more accurate than trying to you know line up some flashing blocks. It just makes more sense for me. And then waveform or phase meter. On the CDJ3000, you can have uh, stacked waveforms, which is really helpful, especially if you're coming from Serato. So I have it set to that. You can have it set to a phase meter as well. But if I have the option, I'd rather have stacked waveforms. Now waveform divisions, I have it set by phrase. This is something that you can set in a uh, record box. You can set up phrases in your track. Uh, I don't use it that often, but I have it set to phrase because I do want to experiment with adding the phrase sections in my songs sometime in the moving forward. Uh, vinyl speed adjust, I have it set to touch. This is just what I have it on by default. It works for me. And then beat jump value, I have set to 16. And this is more for the CDJ 3000s where you actually have beat jump buttons. You can change it on the CDJ. Um, and also you have more options when you tap on the screen and you can use different divisions, but 16 beats is what I usually use. So I like having that as the default with the buttons on the CDJ 3000. Next, we have the mixer section. And for me, most of the time I plug into a, a setup. The mixer, <laughs> unfortunately, isn't set to the Pro DJ link or networked in with the CDJs. Most clubs will just have the two CDJs or four CDJs set up and they'll forget about the mixer. So I really don't mess with that too often. Now hot cue, I have this selected under a uh, hot cue auto load. Prepare hot cue auto load setting. This is just um, how I have it set up where it'll react more like it does in Serato than um, without this 
turned on in device. This, not that important. Um, one thing I'll say is that if you're using the newer gear, like the Opus and the Omnis, you're gonna wanna have device, li device library plus enabled, but I don't really use those right now, so I don't have it selected. Device library I've checked, and you know I have this set up for CDJs, XDJs, uh, because that's what I usually use. Then finally, we'll want to go into advanced. Um, one thing that I will say is, besides the stuff in DJ system, a lot of the other settings are for when you're using the app. So, um, for instance, here um, under advanced. We're going to scroll down. We don't really need a lot of this stuff. Uh, one thing is your record box XML. If you use a third party app like I do with DJ conversion utility, you want to have it pointed to the correct XML file. So whatever third party app you use to transfer your music between DJ apps, they'll have tutorials on how they want it set up specifically. Um, auto export I have off just because I want to manually do that. I don't want to auto automatically export every time um, I plug in a device like a USB or a SD card like that. Under browse, this one is huge for me. This one here at the top, my tag, add my tag to the comment section. So I'm a huge proponent of using the organization tools in Rekordbox, specifically the my tag section. Uh, I use it to make my tagging system that I make all of my smart playlists or smart crates uh, from to make all the rules. So having the ability to have my tag actually move to the ID3 tags and write it to the actual files makes it so my playlist in Serata or my playlist in Rekordbox pretty much mirror the same ideas that I have in Serato. Now, the way I organize in Rekordbox is a little bit different just because of Having to scroll through tons of songs isn't the best idea, so I have things kind of cut up into more sections. But the general idea of all my playlists and crates are the same on the two uh, softwares. Then after that, recordings, unless you're recording in the app, not too important. Library sync, this is something more for if you're using the cloud features, um, which I do, uh, experimenting with it. Uh, Having my record box library on my mobile devices is super cool. I uh, gotta play with that even more. Then for others, you can name you can set your beat value, BPM sync. I have it set to beat sync. Again, this is more for if you're playing record box, record box DJ in performance mode, which I'm not really doing at the moment. Then let's switch over to view. So here this is pretty similar to like the view tab in Serato where you can change the font size of your library. I have it not super small, but you know, just big enough for me. You can change the line spacing, which just kind of makes things stand out a little bit more. I have mine set to the smallest because I don't really care. Layout, this is important because look at all these different options right here. And what this will do is it will affect these tabs right here so i like having it as clean as possible so i just have the things that i need which is basically the record box xml which is how i transfer music from dj conversion utility and the search for mobile button just because i'm experimenting with using my iphone with record box you want to be able to find it um, let's see display cue markers on preview i have that set just so i know where they are when i'm looking in the library just like this I have tooltips on just because I'm not super familiar with Rekordbox like I am with uh, Serato. So I want to be able to just, if I don't know what something is, just hover over it and get a little bit more information. Again, uh, on this is for the app waveform. I have right or draw at high speed. Uh, my computer can definitely handle it. If you have an older computer, you might want to turn that down. Again, I have my colors set to RGB just because this is how I s I'm used to seeing songs. And again, uh, beat count display, I have this set to memory queue, which just kind of counts down from whatever queue point hot queue you're on to the next one. Can be kind of handy if you're not too sure about phrases. Um, 
you know, if something is eight bars or four bars, being able to see it really quick is can be helpful. And that's about it. Like I said, the things you really want to make sure you have set up are the things in DJ system. If you're planning on playing on USBs, these are the, the settings that will get saved to your, your USB when, whenever you plug it in. So you want to make sure that's all dialed in. Uh, one other thing too, uh, if you're bringing in songs straight into Rekordbox and not transferring them from another app, with all the metadata you want to look under analysis and make sure this stuff is dialed in especially this top one right here the bpm range just like in serato whatever songs you're bringing in you want to make sure this range is selected correctly before you analyze the songs or you might get the wrong bpm it's happened to all of us but this is how you set it in record box um, it's a little bit more hidden than it is in serato unfortunately and track analysis just like in serato you can pick if you just want key if you just want the bpm etc these are the two that i have selected just like i do in serato i want the key information and i want bpm information easy as that and finally at the bottom uh, process mode i have it under performance basically using as much of the computer power as possible to run through all of the analyzation and that's about it um it took me a while to kind of get all of my settings down and find out what made sense for me especially when making the jump from being able to use my laptop to playing on sticks where you don't have all of the options and all of the controls that you would with like a mouse and keyboard but I hope these help definitely try some of these out and mess around you know play a set with some settings if you don't like that just kind of write it down remember and change it the next time you go around. This is, this is what works for me after months and months of trying different settings. So I hope it helps you out. And if you're interested in more DJ related content, please be sure to click on one of the videos right here and I'll catch you guys in the next one.